What's going on? My name is Corey, and today I'm going to show you how to elevate social media graphics for your business from this to this using Adobe Photoshop on the web. If you don't already know, Adobe Photoshop on the web brings all of the powerful tools that we know and love directly to your browser. It's very convenient. In order to demonstrate this today, I'm actually going to use some branding that I developed through a challenge over on my channel and bring it over here to create these graphics. A little backstory, this brand is called Clutch. It is primarily a fashion apparel brand and it is targeting women who love to steal their partner's hoodies. If you know, you know. And it expanded into a fragrance line as well. And so for this project, we're going to use the signature fragrance to create a variation of a launch graphic. So let's jump right into it. Over on Adobe Photoshop on the web, we're gonna start with a 1080 by 1080 canvas, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop in this photo of my product. This is a mock-up, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna pretend I actually took this photo, but the photo was not good enough. So we're gonna start off with generative fill and fill in the background of our canvas to match the background of the photo that we have. In order to do that, we're gonna select the area that we would like to fill in and then over on our contextual taskbar, which you should see somewhere around your canvas, you're gonna select generative fill and then generate. You wanna make sure you're selecting a portion of the original background so that it knows what it should be filling it in with. After I've done that, I duplicated that photo layer and used the same taskbar to remove the background on the new layer, just in case I wanna play around with layering later on down the line. I love to have the focus of my social graphics as a standalone item in case I want to insert things behind or in front of objects to make it more visually interesting. Now that I have the full photo in the size that I desire, I wanted to change the background color because I felt like I I should have something that makes my product stand out a little bit more. So I'm creating a new layer in between my original photo layer and the duplicate layer and adding a color of my choice. Of course, I went through plenty of colors. I cannot make up my mind, but I am going to use linear burn under the blend modes in order to make this look like this was the original color the photo was taken on. Now, I know for this graphic, I would like to create sort of a lifestyle photo that also has some nods to what the fragrance might smell like. So I'm going back to using generative fill and selecting parts of my canvas where I would like to add in other objects. For this, after I select generative fill, instead of just clicking generate, I'm going to describe exactly what it is I'm looking for. For the most part, this is a top-down photo, and so I'm looking for the top view of insert object. For me, that included things like wood and ginger and whatever other objects might allude to the scent of this fragrance, but then we also have some lifestyle objects like jewelry, a piece of clothing. When you use generative fill over in your layers, you'll see that they do present as masks, and so if you do need to rearrange them or adjust them in any way, overlap, etc you can adjust the mask accordingly the same way you would any other by using the paintbrush tool to either add or subtract from the mask this came in handy for me when I needed to resize some of the objects that I've added in using generative fill so that it looks appropriate and it matched everything else one thing I love about Photoshop on the web is that it does have the tools to give you the precision that you need and allows you to express your creative freedom in order to create really unique graphics compared to other products now that I have all the objects in this photo and I'm content with how it looks I'm ready to use this as the base for my graphic. The very first thing I want to do is include a little more of a branded touch. I know the brand is on the product, but I do want to add a little something extra. So I'm adding in the brand icon into the background subtly and again using the blending mode of my preference in order to let it blend in with the graphic itself. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I did separate the product into its own layer and so anything I add in, I can either place on top or behind the product and so in this instance, I want to put it behind. Lastly, we're using the text tool to go ahead and add in any information that we would like to offer on this graphic. For me, that'll be a simple launch date, the website, and a pre-order call to action, of course. The type tool in general is already expansive, but with Adobe Photoshop on the web, the way it's laid out makes it so easy to make decisions and kind of look at your options. At this point, I'm just making subtle adjustments as needed to make this visually interesting, and I am content right here. If you ask me, I say this is a major upgrade from where we started. Try out all the tools you already love with Adobe Photoshop on the web. Bye.